It's time for our weekly arts and culture segment. We have our culture correspondent, Song Yujin, in the studio. Welcome, Yujin. Great to be here, Tongmin. Great to have you here. What do you have for us today? So, Tongmin, guess what? I am back with K-pop again for two straight weeks. So, while covering K-pop stories for the past two weeks, it really made me feel that um, watching K-pop evolve is really fascinating. And what I mean by this is that we're now used to seeing K-pop groups with members who aren't Koreans. But what about other groups that mirror the K-pop style? Well, I had the chance to speak with one such girl group. Let's first take a look. Hi, we are Sarvi. Get ready! 안녕하세요. 저희는 인도네시아에서 언가 그룹입니다. Starby made their debut four years ago. However, they came to Korea this August as trainees. They were chosen for the Grow Together project by the Korean Foundation for International Cultural Exchange, which offers emerging overseas artists the opportunity to train in Korea. Over the last four months, these girls underwent the rigorous training that K-pop trainees go through with hours of vocal lessons and dance classes every day. In Korea, uh, usually they have like a longer time session for the training and they gave us a lot of time to practice by ourselves. Uh, in Indonesia, we always practice with the teacher. So like it's like a different method where Korea makes you like grow and learn uh, from yourself. And it's like... Um... Starby represents the new era in K-pop dubbed as K-pop 4.0. The initial era involved tailoring Korean artists to match the trends in other countries, such as BOA's success in Japan during the early 2000s. This transitioned into the second stage, integrating non-Korean members into K-pop groups, followed by the third stage, featuring groups entirely comprised of non-Korean members. Now, K-pop is exporting its training system. The K-pop nurturing system has reached a significant milestone. Entertainment companies have implemented this system for K-pop groups and witnessing their global success has sparked a growing interest in extending this system internationally. According to Park chang the head of the management agency that trains Starby, this model is pivotal for K-pop's sustained global influence. Adapting K-pop to suit each country and spreading its training and management system can open up new opportunities for the K-pop industry. Overseas fans will feel a stronger sense of familiarity with the artists too. Having finished their months-long training, Starby is now going back to Indonesia. Drawing from their experiences in Korea, this is their vision. We are trying to follow the trend that's happening now, that people like like the Korean K-pop groups that have a very unique genre and a very unique concept in itself. But we try to mix it up with our own nationally like Indonesian trends and also Indonesian costume like we wore today. K-pop's fusion with diverse cultures is one way that could ensure its enduring impact on the global stage. You know what? K-pop really come a long way. Right. It's exporting its training system right now. Um, and Eugene, last time you were talking about the surge in, uh, of English lyrics in K-pop. So what language are Starby's songs in? Well, Tommy, I want to point out that just like I mentioned in my report and when you first saw how Starby introduced themselves, they are not a K-pop group. So Starby is an Indonesian girl group who went through K-pop training. So their songs are in Korean. Their lyrics are either in Indonesian or English. But to link this back to the point I made last week, this kind of shows that more artists around the world are incorporating English lyrics in their songs so that they all want to reach a wider audience. Our culture correspondent, Song Yujin, thank you for your great report. Thank you.